Holy crap, my friends of the Outlands, we've got a lot to talk about. Whew. Hello my friends, Boomy here once again with another video for you, my brothers and sisters of the Outlands. How's everyone doing today? Hope everyone is doing great. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, for all the upcoming Apex Legend news, which we will be doing a lot of on this channel from here on out. And don't worry for everyone else. We're going to be sticking with all the other stuff too. My friends, holy snickerdoodles, the release of the season four gameplay trailer, as you can see playing behind me, is here. And there's a lot to talk about. Robots everywhere. The map changes. What's that about? A new gun, the Sentinel, which looks pretty awesome, by the by. And a lot of these new skins, the cosmetics they have coming in, this looks great. I can't wait to see what the Battle Pass has to offer. Of course, a lot of these new skins will be in the store for people to buy, of course, with real-world money. Um, that's just a thing, and that's just what it's going to be. But, man, I think they've really hit it out of the park so far with these skins. Oh, man, I'm just, I'm too totally excited. Uh, but I love the direction this is going, so let's get into some of the notes that um, Respawn has come out with as to why they did what they did with the map and the other changes that are coming in. So let's take a look at them right here. So here we have it, he says, hi, Jason McCord, who is the design director for Apex Legends with the Apex Legends Season 4 simulation fast approaching, uh, yeah, literally today, today as you guys are watching this, hopefully, um, it is it is here today. Uh, I said, our main goal for the map update, our design side is to get players to make new decisions, and I like that. Um, when doing Battle Royales, you get the same map, and you might get changes here and there every once in a while, but it's the same thing over and over again. You've memorized every single freaking detail of the map, and so you pretty much know what to do. But I love this idea of changing things up. I think that is a great idea. Like he continues, by the end of the season, you probably have your favorite spot or spots to land. You might prefer to rotate out of your drop location in a certain direction, which turns, which turns makes a lot of your games feel similar as the season progresses. Pretty much just like I would have said. Our goal as designers is to offer new ways for you to approach the game and in case of the map so that each drop, rotation, and gunfight feels as fresh as possible. I kind of like that. I like changing things up a bit, keeping everyone on their toes and feet. I think that's really good for a game and for the longevity and health of the game. I really like that because a lot of things you hear about in Fortnite right now is people are just getting bored out of their skulls and some stuff, but they have a new season coming up as well. But who cares about Fortnite? It's all about Apex. Let's see, he continues. Here are a few things we're doing in Season 4 to hopefully help achieve that goal. And with these map things, this is really cool. The sliders gives you as what it looks like right now in Meltdown. And if you slide this over, uh, I thought this was pretty clever and cool. It gives you what the map changes are going to be. Uh, here is that planet drill harvester thing, which is destroying all the things around there, as they tend to do. Uh, but yeah, this is really cool. So this is where it is now. This is what you've been doing for a while in Season 3. And that is what we get to look forward to. I'm all about this map change. This is pretty cool. He continues, the Planet Harvester, that giant sucker right there. As you drop into World's Edge, you'll immediately see the Planet Harvester, which Harmond, Hammond, excuse me, Robotics are using to gather precious metals from the core of the planet because nothing wrong can happen there for reasons unknown. Of course, duh. The red beam can be seen from the entire island giving players a better sense of directionality and understanding of the center of the map. Hey, I, I'm, I'm okay with landmarks, that's fine. Anyone who has played Season 3 of World's Edge knows that the Fuel Depot can be scary, especially in late game. That That's true. Because this P POI is the center of the map, changing this location gives players more opportunity to experience the new content more often. Okay. With this large, multi-level design, the Planet Harvester is unlike anything else on World's Edge and brings exciting new gameplay options to the game. Fights are largely self-contained as squads will tend to enter the fight through a long hallways that lead to the center of the structure. This should make third parties a little more predictable and hopefully easier to defend against. Okay, I can see that, but I think in any type of... Uh, FPS, uh, Battle Royale type of situation. No matter, I think, what the devs do, third parties, they're just going to happen. You start hearing gunfights, 
uh, gunfire and you hear a fight somewhere in the distance. You go towards it. You see two teams going at it. Of course, the mumbling of caught, your team is going to be like, so, do you want to, do you want to push this? You, you want to see? Because about you've been there a while enough to where you're like, I bet they're just healing right now. Let's go kill them. It's going to happen, but I like that it gives you uh, new options for when you are in a gunfight to be like, hey, there's that tunnel behind us. I bet someone's going to be coming up there. Let's lay some traps. Let's do this. Um, I like it. It's cool. We'll have to see how it goes. A lot of the stuff they are doing um, in this article in Season 4 is they're you know trying some things out to see how we as players uh, like and how it feels, and I like that. I think that's a great thing. He continues. Considering the unstable volcanic nature of the world's edge, it's no surprise that the planet harvester has caused giant lava-filled faults to rupture, splitting capital city, or as I call it, Tilted Towers 2.0, uh, in two. So here we go. This is where we have capital city right now. One big freezing ice cream cone. Freezing? Frozen? Ice cream cone. It's a thing. And when we take the slider back, everything is kind of melted along, and there's a giant... Um, rift right here and there's a building it is doing its thing and as they will explain to you that um uh, at one point they wanted to you know if you fell down here you died you just died that's how it was i if if they kept with that which they're not going to you can just imagine the forums and reddit going cray cray on this one or all the um all the griefing you would do by pushing people over it you know guys right there he's shield he's falling he's waiting for his teams to res him and yeah you just push him over and I mean, that actually kind of might be fun. But he continues. Let's talk about it. Capital City splits in two. Capital City was the biggest POI in Season 3, getting the most action right out of the ship by sending the f fissure straight through Capital City and creating some dead space in between, swallowing up one of the construction buildings as well. We essentially split this area into two separate zones for players to land and loot. Fragment East, Fragment West. The large fissure can only be crossed in two locations, a zipline or fallen skyscraper bridge. I wonder if you can go through the bridge. That'd be kind of cool. To go through, like, a building that's rooms and offices are totally off-center. I think that'd be kind of that'd be kind of trippy and cool. Uh, he continues, This allows teams breathing room to control one side after the drop, reducing the risk of running into third parties from other side of the city. As you can see, there's a theme here. They're, they're really, I don't know if they're worried so much about third partying as they really want to concentrate on helping people not necessarily avoid them, but make it a little tougher to third party. There's a theme here. I can see it. He continues, is the construction site too hot for you? Land in Fragment East and use Watson or Caustic to control the choke points for extra security. Of course, Pathfinder and Octane can both use their ultimates to get their teams across at any location. Now, when I was talking about uh, when, you know, they first designed it, this right here could have been a problematic experience for people. They decided not to do that, but put it a twist, the updraft. The original design of the new fissure had players drop to their death if they had the misfortune of missing a jump. Yeah, that'd be me. We wanted this gap to better... To, to matter for players to fight across and control the bridges as the only way across. This let certain legends shine, Pathfinder and Octane for crossing, Caustic, Watson for defending, and created some intense firefights when the ring was approaching. The problem was a fatal fall felt too punishing. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely. The last thing we wanted was players avoiding the new map changes because they had an unfair experience. Yeah, you know, it makes sense. Now, if you jump into the fissure that cuts through Capital City, you'll slowly be carried back up from the heated, pressurized air and allowed to coast across the land on the other side. This is balanced by two things. First, you take 25 damage from the intense heat and embers floating inside. Makes sense. This is consistent amount of damage every time you drop back down. Second, you travel very slowly in third person. Oh, that's interesting. While moving in the updraft. You are essentially flying. You are essentially a flying loot pinata for any nearby enemy players. So snipers with the new Sentinel rifle, get ready. Competitive integrity is always a big factor while designing new features, and our main concern with this feature was allowing players to escape fights they are losing by sliding into the fissure and sailing away. We think the damage and slow rise makes players respect the gap while in a firefight, while in calmer moments, allowing players to have fun and experiment with this new space without the risk of immediate death. You know what? I like this idea. Once we get in, once we play around with it, we'll see what happens. We'll see what we have to do with it, whether they'll nerf the damage or they'll buff it to think uh, it is not as it should be. Now, the survey camp, as here it is, many of us have been here before. This is what it looks like when you put the slider over here, right there. Look at that. New construction crane. 
and they're moving. They're getting ready to place. They're going places with whatever the material is they're getting for whatever reasons they may or may not have, how nefarious it might be. I highly doubt it's it's not nefarious. Uh, but here you go. This looks cool. This is awesome. Some really cool stuff coming with this. As they say, the survey camp. This is new. Small POI in the snow, snowy fields between the epicenter and Skyhook. This is another camp created to relieve the pressure of locations like Capital City, Refinery, and Epicenter. It also creates some potentially new rotations like moving through the train tunnel to get a Skyhook. Because this is a small POI, we wanted to give it a little more of a draw. For this reason, we created weapon racks. Now, if you went into um, the firing range or into the training center uh, in Apex Legends, you'll be very familiar with those, and these are coming to Season 4. Weapon racks. These are guaranteed weapons placed on racks in small buildings of a survey camp. You'll recognize them from your training and firing range. This should give players who prioritize a good weapon over premier drop location a new decision to make. We're always excited to try flipping Battle Royale rules on their heads, and we look forward to seeing how this feature influences where people drop. Now, that should be interesting. Um, after reading this and looking at it and just like kind of commiserating with myself over this one, I kind of don't like this idea. I think so, a lot of people will like it because, hey, this is where I'm going to get my... This is where I'm going to get that big shiny gun I've always loved because this thing's not going to be filled with Mozambiques because apparently that's where everyone just finds... Mozambiques are everywhere. What a lousy gun. Just get rid of it. Throw that in the fissure and, and let it just die. Can we please? Thank you very much. Uh, but, you know, if you're looking for, I don't know, your favorite thing, maybe the hemlock is like, I, I love the hemlock. It's my favorite gun. And it's there's always going to be guaranteed to be there. Maybe. and Or the triple take. Everyone's favorite gun uh, might be there, according to these pictures right here. Look, you got it. Got yourself a triple take right there. That that's always fun. Uh, to me, I kind of feel like it kind of takes away the RNG nature of a battle royale. You get in, you kind of scramble to get what you can get, and as you go along, as you move, as you fight, you pick up the your the um, the kit that you really want to use that you're really good at. And you get a peacemaker or what have you. And that's what you do. Or you learn how to fight with the stupid little baby guns out there, uh, the Mozambique. And that's what you do. So I'm kind of uh, torn by this one right here. But we will see what happens with it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. He continues and finalizes and concludes. With these updates, as well as new town takeover coming later in Season 4, ooh, we hope you are excited to play the new World's Edge as we are. Thank you for playing uh, Apex Legends. Jason McCord, Design Director, Apex Legends. So there you have it, my outlandy friends. So much is coming with us. All these amazing new skins, as you saw right there. Watson right now and is one of my favorites. Wraith is looking pretty good, too. But everyone's a freaking robot. Oh, yeah, and Revenant's coming. Hello. Thank you, Darren DePaul. Uh, looking forward to that as well and to some of his abilities, to which, if you think about it, when he did uh, Shadows Fall, Fight or Flight, uh, yeah, Fight or Fright. No, Fight or Fright. There it is. Uh, they were teasing his abilities as we were able to have his abilities. So that should be interesting and fun to experience and play around with Revenant in Season 4. I'm looking forward to this. This looks really good, really exciting. I'm always a big proponent for map changes, new content, something to, to mix it up a little bit to keep people off and on their toes and so they don't feel totally comfortable in this type of arena, this type of match thing, and throwing it up. So Rank should be interesting to see how Rank does in this one. And uh, yeah. There you go. My friends, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you excited for Season 4? Assimilation in Apex Legends. Let me know your thoughts there. What do you think about the new skins there? We'll do a video about the Battle Pass and all the goodies you get in that, and that will come shortly after. My friends, as always, make sure you hit that like button. The more likes we get, the more people get to see as we start doing Apex News and adding this to this channel right here broadening our horizons yes 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 because this is a this is a great game and it's a game i love um i'm not the best at but i still love it just like a lot of things in life anyways my friends make sure you hit the subscribe button become part of the family here at Boomy nation the freak show of youtube the black sheep of gaming and as always my friends remember to be kind it's about community and don't forget to spay and neuter your wookies we'll see you later good day